It's 5.30 here in Singapore and you're watching The Big Story where we'll discuss the top news of today and explain why it matters. I'm Harianto Diman reporting to you live from the Straits Times newsroom. Congratulations to Indonesia's seventh and current president, Mr Joko Widodo, who has been named the Straits Times Asian of the Year 2019. Better known as Jokowi, he was named for being a unifying figure in an age of chaos and disruption, navigating both domestic politics and global affairs. In 2014, he caught the world's attention being the first person from outside Jakarta's elite circles to take the presidency of Southeast Asia's largest nation. This year, he retained his office with a handsome margin, but also spearheading the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific. Other previous winners included Singapore's founding Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chinese President Xi Jinping. Now to talk more about Mr Joko Widodo and Straits Times Asian of the Year, we have foreign editor Jeremy Ao Yong. Welcome Jeremy. Hi Arianto. Jeremy, uh, as a start, you know, tell us uh, why was uh, Mr Joko chosen as the ST Asian of the Year 2019? Okay, so mm. maybe just a little bit of our process. So we have a panel that okay. we debate this. This is the eighth time actually that we've named an Asian of the Year. And it's always a healthy debate. Yep. This year, the vote was unanimous. Mm. Uh, everybody agreed that uh, President Joko Widodo of Indonesia, his achievements this year, and, and uh, I think I can share this. He has actually been in conversations in one of our previous rounds mm. before. But this year, uh, we thought he had an exceptional year. I mean, his okay. achievements both at home and abroad were really set him apart from everybody else, and that's why the vote was unanimous. Uh, if we just look, I mean, two broad areas. Domestically, uh, he had an election this year. Yep. Uh, he won that election by a larger margin than he did before against uh, Prabowo, his challenger. Mm. It was a very divisive election, and uh, Prabowo, just like he did at the previous election, uh, contested the early projections of the results. Mm. Uh, right up until the official one, the official results were announced. Yeah. And uh, I thought Jokowi showed a very uh, astute political hand on how he dealt with all this division. Mm. I mean, there was protests, there were demonstrations. Uh, he was, you know, very careful not to uh, declare victory early. Mm. And the moment uh, he was sworn in, he yep. started to pull the country together. Right. I mean, the moment all this division was over, he was the name the president, he started to pull the country together. And I think that the, the most emblematic part of that is when he named his cabinet yep. and he put Prabowo, this man who has challenged him twice, mm. he named him defense minister. Uh, and this cabinet, and that wasn't even the only highlight in this yeah. cabinet. Uh, he also named uh, Nadi Makarim, who the, is the co-founder of Gojek and uh, you know somebody from the new economy he named yeah. him uh, it's quite a young fellow so he named him uh, uh, education minister I think he got a lot of uh, plaudits for that choice yeah uh, overseas I would say the biggest the biggest achievement was uh, this thing that we call the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific yeah this was a document that the ASEAN leaders adopted in Bangkok I think in June uh, it's a complicated thing to do with international relations. Mm. So I think if I were to boil it down, let's just say the concept of Indo-Pacific uh, over the past few years has been something that different major powers have, been, have used right. to push their own interest. Mm. Um, and uh, ASEAN, which happens to sit smack in the middle of the Indo-Pacific, has been getting pulled from one side to the other. Yeah. So again, uh, Indonesia was uh, uh, re really the one that were trying to push through this ASEAN outlook, which is ASEAN's take on the Indo-Pacific. Yeah. It allowed ASEAN to assert itself a little bit more, to, to seize the geopolitical narrative when it comes to Indo-Pacific and act in its own interests. Right. And you see, we know that Mr. Joko is competent. Right, uh, no doubt about that, both uh, domestically and internationally. And now that he's on his second term as president and his final term as well, what are some of the challenges you you reckon that he will face? You know, uh, in the coming years. Okay, I'm, I'm glad you asked me that because mm. I, I do want to be clear that this this Asian of the Year award, uh, it's it's not a recognition that your job is done. Yeah, yeah. This it's not that you're you're perfect. It's you know there's and Indonesia still has a lot of challenges. Mm. Uh, Jokowi has also identified some. I think for his 
his uh, second term, which will be his last term. Yeah. Uh, at least three top ones come to mind. The first is he has to uh, breathe some life into this uh, sluggish economy. Right. And, uh, economies everywhere are under pressure right now, mm. uh, but this is a special cha a special challenge for him. Secondly, he needs to root out corruption, which remains to be a problem. It remains a problem in Indonesia. Mm. The third one is uh, tackling what seem, uh, seems to be of late, the rise of uh, religious uh, extremism in Indonesia. Yeah. Right. Now, thank you, Jeremy, for coming on to share a bit more, of course, about our uh, ST Asian uh, of the Year 2019. Now, to read more on ST's citation on our Asian of the Year 2019, you can head over to straightstimes.com.